Today, instead of telling you how stupid you are if you believe in God and that he created the universe in six days so that we could worship him, I'm going to tell you a story about one trip that we took to Algonquin Park. And for anybody who hasn't been to Canada or Ontario or in a park, Algonquin Park is about the size of the Tsarland, and if you've never been in Germany, well, look it up on a map. It's, um, it's a very big national park, and one of the advantages of this national park, like quite a few national parks in uh, probably all over the world, but Canada especially, they have um, wild animals, and they have no cars, because there's no roads. So if you want to go in there, you have to either hike, or go by canoe and of course we always liked the canoe which included hiking as well which you had had hike with canoe on your head but it was it was hard work but you did it because you wanted to be there you wanted to be away from the city and you wanted to smell the fresh clean air and you wanted to be with all the wild animals and live life how not simply just do things without any enter entertainment. You don't take electronic devices with you. There's no, of course, back when we, back when we were there, uh, there was no such thing as iPods. But um, the point is, you don't need that shit because that's all confusion shit. Anyhow, to get to the story really quickly, so this doesn't get too out of hand, we were, um, I don't know, three days into the trip, maybe. He always it's best to go for about a week or or longer, depending on how, how much non-civilization you can handle. And there are rules, rules to follow. I mean, they're not written by anybody. Well, they are written down so that people who don't know will understand. But there's one very basic rule, and that very basic rule is do not ever, ever, ever take food into your tent. And this isn't just because of bears. There's other animals there that you don't want to meet face to face when they're hungry. And hang your food in a tree so you have to take a long rope with you and you hang your t food so that's hanging meters away from the tree and meters away from the ground and this might seem like more work than it's required just do it don't argue about it if you're in a national park where there's wild animals hang your food secure it well and it's i mean the birds might even peck at it, it, it as well, so you've got to have it in something that's secure and hard and tight. That's just basic rules. And if you take meat with you, which we learned to do after a while, you have to take it frozen, of course. And it's after the second day, you you can't do anything with meat. So it's for the first night for the luxury of it. Burn everything when you're done. I mean, you should eat the fat anyway because you're up there. You need the energy. But um, you're going to get to a point where you have maybe a plastic bag with peanuts in it. I wouldn't suggest a whole lot of these dry peanut stuff because you get sick of it after a while. But a little bit's alright. Anyhow, you get up there and your peanut bag is empty. And what do you do with it? Well, my friend Brian, he thought if you put his peanut bag inside of a bag, inside of a bag, inside of a bag, inside of his knapsack, it would be okay. I mean, it was okay because we never put the knapsacks in the tent. But I'll get back to this in uh, just one second because we've got to keep it short. So anyway, here it is. Oh, pff, I don't know. We didn't have a watch with us, so we'd have to, I'd have to guess that it's 3 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And I am very nicely sleeping. Sleeping in such a way that I don't care what the outside world is doing. And the outside world, of course, is just on the other side of a t tent that's just like very thin. So you're not really even inside the outside world. Outside of the outside world, you're just there, inside your tent and inside your sleeping bag. And Brian says, "Hey, wake up!" And I think he might even shook me or something. I said, "What's up?" He said, "Listen, I think there's a bear out there." And I thought, "Uh huh." And then we were really, 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 really quiet, and we listened. And I had this strange, strange urge to want to urinate. I mean, I guess it's not that strange, but I really wanted to urinate. And I thought, well, if there's a bear out there, you shouldn't confront a bear. And so I thought, so what do I do? 
piss myself. Uh, well, then I get myself a wet sleeping bag, and that's a little bit silly as well. So I thought, um, contemplate, contemplate, think, think, think. And then I thought, hmm, uh, flashlight? Uh, scare the bear away? Anyhow, eventually I figured we were up on a little bit of a hill, I don't know, maybe uh, three or ten, ten meters up, and I thought, okay, if it's a bear, I just run down the hill and jump in the water and swim away as fast as I can, although I can't swim very well. But um, I got up eventually, not because I was brave, because I really had to urinate. And I got out of the tent and made sure that I made a little bit of sound so that the animal knew I was coming. I didn't make any violent sounds, but enough so that, he, that, that I wasn't going to surprise him. And the animal, of course, wasn't a bear. It was a big-ass raccoon, which scampered away when he saw me in my light, and then I did my urination thing. And the big-ass raccoon had gone through the knapsacks we had under the canoe to keep him from getting um, damp from the, the dew. But um, he had gone through one, the, the layer of the nap, the um, backpack, to find a bag that was inside of a bag, inside of a bag, inside of a plastic bag. So like four bags within one another and only the inside bag, it had peanuts in it. And he could smell that and was curious enough to get to it that he went through all this trouble to rip through a knapsack so that Brian had a nice hole in his knapsack to get through this food that wasn't even there, just the smell of it. So in case anybody decides that they're going to go visit the wilderness before we chop it all down and turn it into wasteland like we've done for the 80% of the woodland and jungle so far, do not ever piss around with the law of keep your food away from your tent and burn everything that's burn all the food or throw it in the water or whatever when you're done with it wash your hands well and do not take smells of food in your tent it is dangerous and the bears are the least dangerous because they don't they don't like the smell of humans very much raccoons of course are more dangerous because they're more curious and they don't mind if they rip, scurry around at your tent site so just be careful with your food and for anybody that's not gonna on a trip like this, you should. If you if you go and see nature and be right with it, it changes your life. It changes your life from not giving a fuck about the planet to wanting to save it because it's a beautiful place.